Satan, pray to Satan, pray to Satan. Okay, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Professor Dewey and welcome to Exercise Physiology 101. And I'm just going to start by taking attendance. Jim Stepani, here! Yep, Jim Stepani is another one of those I have a PhD assholes, just like Lane Norton who uses a title to trick unsuspecting victims into thinking he knows jack shit, and what does a guy with a PhD in exercise physiology do? Teach people what to eat at Subway, of course. I'm going in the Subway, show you guys how to uh, get a low carb, high protein uh, meal that's uh, actually good for uh, your health. Can I get a uh, chopped salad with um the Subway Club Double Meat, please. Okay, class, pop quiz. What is good to eat at Subway? Um, uh, meat and, uh, lettuce? Very good, Jimmy. You get a banana sticker. Now, I don't think we should be too worried about him telling idiots to eat processed meat products because his channel is filled with boring, low-end production garbage that no one's really interested in watching. And, oh look, his first name has two capital letters. Well, there's no forum training specifically in Shortcut the Size because it's... Sure, get the size is not a beginner's uh, program, but it's sort of an introduction, an introductory program, I guess, to uh, to people on my. But despite Jim not having a big presence on his own YouTube channel, he, according to Bodybuilding.com, is the personal nutrition consultant of numerous celebrities that are probably on steroids, including Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And is that what you were doing in this uh, Bodybuilding.com video clip, Jim, making steroids? I test steroids. It's not myself. I test. Steroids, it's not myself. Yeah, so Bodybuilding.com did a video series featuring Jim Stepani, and since someone else handled the shooting and editing, it actually looks presentable, and unfortunately, it got a lot of views, and unfortunately, it's about nutrition, and unfortunately, I'm forced to fight a never-ending war on ignorance. So here we go with six week shortcut to fucking shred. In the shortcut to shred program, the macronutrients are ranked protein first, fat is actually second, and then carbs come in third place. Okay, can anyone name the three macronutrients? Um, is clarinet a macronutrient? Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Clarinet is not a macronutrient. Well, we're already off to a good start when a guy makes a weight loss program emphasizing protein and fat, and we all already know that protein and fat is going to come from meat. And because Jim Stepani lives in opposite world where when he reads studies like these, which find high protein diets correlate to increased risk of weight gain and obesity, and increased meat consumption increases weight gain even when controlled for caloric intake, he thinks it's a good idea to recommend lots of meat for weight loss. Okay everyone, for today's assignment, I want you to write out a simple six week program for weight loss. But teacher, I can't do it. I ate all my crayons. The protein sources that you want to focus on are your lean cuts of meat, like top sirloin, flank steak. Those are very lean sources of beef. You can even get uh, ground beef that's 97% lean. Anything 95% and above lean is great. Uh, obviously chicken breasts, but even chicken thighs. Fish is always a great source, and we have both lean fish, like halibut, sole, and then we have fatty fish, like salmon, obviously eggs. Eggs are a very high quality protein source. And then we've also have dairy. Dairy is a very critical protein source on the Shortcut to Shred program. Where the fuck do I even begin? First of all, what the fuck is with all the red meat? Chicken and fish is bad enough, but red meat has been especially linked to increases in all-cause, heart disease, and cancer mortality, and substitution of red meat with literally any other fucking food, particularly nuts and whole grains, has been shown to reduce mortality risk. And what's this shit about lean cuts of meat? If you're trying to avoid fat, which is a good thing, as it has a tendency to raise cholesterol levels, clog arteries, kill insulin-producing beta cells, and cause diabetes and eventually kill you, why would you recommend a diet so high in meat since meat contains such high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol? Beans, lentils, and high protein grains like quinoa have virtually no fat, zero cholesterol, and would you look at that, they actually reduce mortality risk. Research shows that anyone who is training intensely need at least one gram of protein per pound of body, at least. 
There is research showing that going as high as one and a half grams was very effective for promoting muscle growth and strength gains. I love how when you have no idea of what the fuck you're talking about, throwing in the words, there's research showing will make idiots think you know jack shit. Well, where's the research, Jim? Where's the research showing that eating one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight is optimal for muscle growth? Okay, here's a tough question. How much protein do you need to build muscle? Um, um, I know the answer. All the protein! Well, here's some actual research for you, Jim. This study found no differences in whole body protein synthesis or indexes of lean body mass in strength athletes consuming either 0.64 grams or 1.1 grams or more of protein per pound of body weight, but what they did find was that protein oxidation was much higher for the high protein group, indicating a nutrient overload. This study on novice bodybuilders also found there were no differences in muscle mass or strength gains between those consuming 0.61 and 1.19 grams of protein per pound of body weight, and based on nitrogen balance data, the authors recommended consuming 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And a study on collegiate level strength athletes found no differences in body composition, strength, or resting hormonal concentrations between those consuming 0.77 and 0.91 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So the research shows that the optimal amount of protein intake for muscle growth is right around 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is half of what you recommend, so it seems you do nothing but talk out of your ass. This also is isn't just a harmless, innocent mistake. Since Jim recommends eating such a high amount of meat and such a low amount of fruits and vegetables, his diet is extremely acid-forming, and high acid-forming diets have been shown to promote muscle loss in older adults, and this is likely due to calcium being leached out of muscle tissue to buffer a high acid load. So, great job, Jim. Maybe you should change the name of your program to Shortcut to Small. Now, a lot of people are kind of surprised at the fact that you're eating so much fat. But fat is not the enemy. Just because you're eating fat doesn't mean you're gonna get fat. I'd like some meat on those shoes. Shortcut to shred. Well, I can tell you right now that a high fat diet is not ideal for weight loss as fat is so efficiently stored into adipose tissue that if you perform an adipose tissue biopsy where they cut out a portion of the fat from underneath your skin, they can tell exactly where your fat sources come from, whether they be from animal products or plant sources. Not only that, but fat is the most calorically dense macronutrient, making it far easier to overeat on a high fat diet. So again, why the fuck is this called shortcut to shred? There is no metabolic advantage to this diet and the only reason anyone would ever lose weight following this diet is because they are severely restricting calories and have a high activity level. The omega-3 fats actually work in the body to turn on genes that increase fat burning and they turn off genes that decrease fat storage. And they also produce very beneficial prostaglandins that help to decrease inflammation, which provides most of the health benefits. Okay, well, that's all well and good, but I'm going to guess you're going to recommend getting these omega-3 fatty acids from... Fatty fish, that's one of the best sources. Salmon is a great uh, source. Also some fattier uh, cuts of tuna. If you're gonna get canned tuna, uh, actually get the white albacore instead of the chunk light. It has more of the omega-3 fats. Even sardines are a great source of omega-3 fats. <laughs> And the problem with getting omega-3 fatty acids from fish is fish consumption is associated with increased type 2 diabetes risk and this is likely due to the high levels of pollutants found in fish and this has also been associated with increased risk in allergies and reduced brain size in children. Did your mom eat a lot of fish, Jim? I also have no fucking idea why you're making it such a big point that omega-3 fatty acids reduce inflammation when all of the foods you recommend are pro-inflammatory. These animal products contain high amounts of saturated fat, which activate pro-inflammatory genes, and they are all high in methionine, particularly fish, which is a sulfur-containing amino acid, which directly feeds cancer cells, causes oxidative stress, and reduces life expectancy. Do you have some kind of phobia with plants, Jim? Do you not realize you can get omega-3 fatty acids from things like flax seeds, walnuts, or you can even take an algae-based DHA supplement, which don't contain any of these pollutants or pro-inflammatory properties? Saturated fats are actually not a fat you need to avoid especially for males. Saturated fats have been found to enhance 
testosterone levels. So even though heart disease is the number one cause of death in America and saturated fat has been shown to increase cholesterol levels, which then leads to atherosclerosis, saturated fat is still not something to be avoided. Uh, I'm really getting the feeling that health isn't a consideration in this program. Okay, does anyone know if saturated fat is either healthy or unhealthy? Uh, uh, saturated fat tastes good, so it's okay. And where the fuck are you getting the idea that saturated fat increases testosterone levels? First of all, vegans have the same level of available androgens as meat eaters, so I don't think anyone should feel compelled to eat any amount of artery-clogging animal products. Secondly, the diet that you recommend is severely lacking in fiber, and fiber is extremely important in ridding our bodies of excess estrogens, as fiber increases the size of our bowel masses, and larger bowel masses increase estrogen excretion, which reduces serum estrogen levels. And a lot of the foods that you recommend are either high in estrogen or high in pollutants that affect our hormone levels. Chickens, for instance, have the highest concentration of phthalates of any meat, and high phthalate exposure has been shown to reduce testosterone levels in men. Fish are also high in PCBs and endocrine-disrupting pollutants that have an estrogen-like effect, and dairy contains the female hormones estrogen and progesterone, which have been shown to reduce serum testosterone levels. So if you're so concerned with increasing testosterone levels, then why are you recommending all of these animal products and such little high-fiber plant foods? Do you just not know what the fuck you're talking about? Ugh, why do my nipples hurt? The only bad fat is trans fats. Those are the ones you want to avoid. It's been found to increase the risk of heart disease and certain cancers. Okay, well you obviously didn't learn this in school, but animal products contain trans fats, you fucking moron. You just admitted that your shitty diet increases heart disease risk. Thank you for making my job just slightly easier. A few people realize that out of the three macronutrients, Carbohydrates are the only ones that are not essential by the body. Carbohydrates aren't an essential macronutrient, eh? Well, I think it's obvious to everyone that this whole six week to shred diet is a low carbohydrate diet. Well, guess what low carbohydrate diets are associated with? Increases in heart disease and all cause mortality risk. So instead of calling this shortcut to shred, maybe you should call this shortcut to the grave. And the reason why these low carbohydrate diets are very harmful is because of their reliance on animal products. The study I just showed you was a cohort study comparing a low carbohydrate meat-based diet to a low carbohydrate vegan diet, and the low carbohydrate vegan diet reduced heart disease and all-cause mortality risk. So regardless of the macronutrient composition of your diet, it is always a good idea to rely on whole plant foods. After you work out, you want to replenish that glycogen, and research shows that the best way to make sure you are restoring this muscle glycogen levels is to get high glycemic or fast digesting carbs. So that's why I recommend getting things like gummy bears or Blanca Pixie Sticks. Gummy bears or Blanca Pixie Sticks. A guy who claims to have a PhD level education is claiming that gummy bears and pixie sticks are some of the best post-workout foods. What fucking good is a PhD degree if you learn in fucking school that gummy bears and pixie sticks are some of the best fucking foods for you to eat? There you go guys, Jim Stepani, worst of the fitness industry. I'm fucking done. Okay, listen up everyone, this is very important. If you're ever going to take one piece of information out of this class, I want all of you to remember to always eat gummy bears. Yay, I love gummy bears. Beef, what a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how. 